This is the Valkyrie. We're looking at the Eastern Front of World War One. We're going to be playing uh, the campaign in Prussia, Russia, Poland, uh, Austria Hungary, Galicia, plus the Serbian stuff, and we will be bringing in Romania and uh, Thessalonica and Gallipoli, if, if I can manage to put Gallipoli into the system. Um, people who have watched my channel before realise that uh, I've actually played this one before, but uh, when I played it before, I played the entire campaign, which is, uh, it's totally overwhelming. What I'll do with this, I intend to play in the Eastern Front, and if we, uh, uh, when Russia gets knocked out, or, or if Russia gets knocked out, we'll switch over, um, possibly bring the Western Front in. Now, the game itself, in terms of components, it's, it consists of five separate modules. You get the Italian module, you get the Russian uh, Front, you get the Serbian module, the Ottoman module, and the Western Front. Um, but there is also a Grand Campaign module as well. I wouldn't recommend the Grand Campaign. It just adds an economic framework to the whole system, which uh, you can you don't need. Just play the the Total War duration game if you're that way inclined. Um, thing about it is this is just part of the game. It's got a big footprint. We are talking about. Uh, eight foot by four foot to you know, do the eastern front. We've got uh, you technically, unless you're playing Thessalonica and Gallipoli, you don't need this map here, so you could cut, cut it down slightly. Um, the, the map is. is it's a nice enough map, but it's very, it's different, totally unique because it works on uh, hex side terrain. It works on the hex side, so a single hex can have, could have six different terrain types. This one here has river, river, forest, um, rough, clear, rough, clear. Uh, so it's totally unique, but it creates rather a cluttered looking map, and the map. Um, it's difficult to see what's going on when, when we're filming this. We're going to have to go in really close on the particular fronts. Uh, counters, pretty standard. Anyone says, oh, he's not clipped them. Uh, clipper bust. So I tried to repair it, but I couldn't, even using the videos that are on YouTube. So I've bought a new one. Um, but uh, I've already set the game up now, so I'll probably clip things as the reinforcements are coming in. Um, the manual itself, it, it rules, is really good, coming in at uh, 23 pages. Now, there are, if you, if you play the modules, they do have their own uh, special rules as well coming in, uh, but it's a, a well. It's, it's, an, it's easy to handle in terms of rules and complexity, considering what it's doing. Um, it's not massively modern. You've got a terrain effects chart where it hasn't got the, the, the terrain type and colour down the side. You're old style, basically. Not a great deal of tables that come with the game. You've got your combat results table, and that's two different types depending on the year it gets a lot more bloody as things progress um, as people build up their technical innovation tactical innovation sorry and get and trench warfare becomes more and more deadly um we've got in terms of the managing the counters there are these little core sheets now the big problem with this is there aren't enough uh, core markers, particularly for the Russians, there's hardly any. Uh, and I'm probably going to end up using French uh, core markers just to, to remove counter clutter on the Eastern Front. Uh, 
Germany. Yeah, again, Austria's got the same thing. They're not enough core markers, which is a bit of a shame, but your core markers are just there to to mark where stacks are. You don't do anything else. You could make your own core markers, to be quite honest. So you could even just find some counters that are just add things like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It, it doesn't even have to hypothetically mark a core. It could it just it could just do what it does, which is act as a marker for where a stack is to avoid clutter. Uh, maps a bit tatty as well in places because it's been played before a few times and uh, it's uh, had a bit of a rough rough treatment at times. The thing about the map, uh, there's a lot of little maps. This is made out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight little maps. Most of them are main size maps, but there's a lot of small ones like this. This one here is a, a little map. Uh, this is a bit fiddly, uh, but it's a bit, it's, it's an odd shaped game map. Um, so they probably didn't have a lot of choice. In terms of uh, other components, uh, you've got things where you can mark your supply tracks, all, all your uh, HQs, uh, act as conduits for ammunition and stuff like that. Um, you've got things like your demoralization track, that tracks national morale. Uh, if your national morale fails, things get really desperate for you but it takes a long time to break a nation's morale um, if we look at the actual start here we have um, Russian army is uh, it's at its mobilization point it's uh, but it's not not ready at the front um, possibly the only army that's near the front is the eight I think it is down there. Um, it's difficult to see what's going on, so I've put blocks down, coloured blocks to mark where the armies is. Uh, we're going to have to come in, go in close to see the actual action when we're filming this. We've got um, Germans uh, sitting pretty uh, in Prussia, not expecting anything really. They they did they got totally surprised by the uh, Russian speed of the Russian mobilization, which uh, almost ended fatally for them. Um, we've got Galicia, the Austrian. Because we're starting on the first of August, the Austrian army hasn't crossed the border yet. It's concentrated and ready to move. Down in Serbia, we've got three Russian. Uh, three um, Austro-Hungarian armies facing off against uh, four very weak Serbian armies and, and, and Montenegrin forces down here. We've, in terms of the attack, um, the Austrians severely underestimated the fighting capacity of the Serbians, who oddly enough don't suffer national demoralisation. And uh, really, they, they, they obviously weren't expecting the effectiveness of machine guns and, and rifles, modern rifles as well, which uh, was a horrible shock to them, um, as it was in Glacier as well, uh, as it was <laughs> for everybody ultimately when they faced off against modern weapons. Right, there we are as an introduction. Um, as I say, it's a big game, it's an expensive game, it's hard to get, but if anyone's interested and you're in the UK, all the modules are available on Second Chance Games. Right, that's it for an introduction.